The goal with the defensive bet is essentially to minimize losses in marginal situations where you're uncertain as to whether or not you have the best hand, but you feel as though you have to call an opponent's bet if he indeed bets the river. The idea is to bet a smaller amount than you think your opponent would bet. That would force your opponent to raise you on the river if he was looking for more value on the hand, and most of the time, your opponent won't have a hand strong enough to make that play. Even when an opponent suspects you may be making a defensive bet, he still would likely elect to just call on the river unless he has the nuts or pretty close to it. Let's take a look at a few examples of how to use the defensive bet effectively. With the blinds at 50-100, a player raises your big blind to 300, and you defend it with ace-8. The flop comes king-8-3. You check to your opponent, and he also checks. The turn is a 6, and you check the turn, you know, slightly worried that your opponent might be trapping you with a king. Your opponent now bets 450 on the turn, and you decide you're going to look him up. The river cards the 5 of diamonds, completing the flush that was out there. If you're up against an aggressive player who's capable of making large bets on the river as a bluff, or even a value bet with a hand like ace-king, this might be a good time for a defensive bet since there's a hand you can now represent. If you bet the river, your opponent is not going to raise you unless he actually hit the flush on the river himself. Even with a set of kings, your opponent will likely just call on the river rather than raise. However, if you check the river, he'll likely make close to a pot-sized bet with a set there. Since you aren't really sure where you stand in the hand, the last thing you want to do here is face a large river bet. The best way to do that is to make a defensive bet on the river. So with 15.50 in the pot, you could bet as little as 5.50 on the river. Your river bet isn't intended to be a bluff at all, really. It is intended to accomplish the following. One, take your opponent's big bluff weapon away from him on the river. Number two, allow you to see the hand through at a cheaper price. Your opponent isn't likely to fold any hand that beats you for such a small-sized bet, but that's not the goal of the bet. The bet's designed so that you can minimize your own damage on the hand and not be faced with calling a large bet where you'd, you'd be unsure what to do. The bet simplifies your decision for you, really. If your opponent raises, well, you should probably dump your hand as he's likely just made the flush on the river. Now, there are some players that are capable of pouncing on a defensive bet as a bluff, but they're few and far between. Besides, we have a plan for those guys, and I'll get to that later. Okay, now let's look at another scenario where the defensive bet works well. Okay, with the blinds at 1 and 200, you call a raise in the big blind at 600 with pocket fives. The flop comes 5, 6, 7 with two clubs. You check, and your opponent bets 900. You raise the bet to 2,500, and he calls. Okay. Now the turn is the deuce of spades, and you bet 3,500. He calls. At this point, you put him on an overpair, but you're not sure. He may have a flush draw or possible straight draw. The river card is an ugly one for your hand. It's the four diamonds. Now, if your opponent was calling with an eight in his hand, he may just have made the straight. Despite that, this is the perfect opportunity for you to make a defensive bet. If you bet this river card and your opponent raises you, you simply have to fold your set. It's extremely unlikely that he could raise you on the river without the straight, especially because you were in the big blind and could easily have the straight here. There's 13,300 in this pot, and your turn bet was 3,500. Now, you don't want to bet less than 3,500, but you don't want to bet much more than that either. If you check the river, your opponent may decide to get aggressive and try to steal the pot away from you with a missed flush jar or something, and he might bet something like 12,000. Even though you can beat a bluff, poker is so much easier when you don't have to face such high-pressure decisions for large percentage of your chips. Instead, betting anywhere from 3,500 to 4,500 the river is definitely the way to go. There's an added benefit to this bet size, aside from the fact that it will help you defend against a huge river bet. If your opponent did have, say, pocket aces, he may decide that you were bluffing with a flush draw and still pay you off. If your opponent does have the eight in his hand, he might not even raise you, fearing that you won't call unless you have the 8 also, but, you know, he might think you might have the 8-9 for a flop straight. Checking isn't a terrible option here, but it's actually more dangerous in that if your opponent makes a big river bet, you'll be forced to play the guessing game. The defensive bet allows you to control the pot size by dictating the amount of the river bet rather than allowing your opponent to decide how big the pot's going to be. Obviously, the defensive bet is a bet that is always made out of position. If you're in position, well, there's no need to bet at all in these marginal spots. The only real danger in using this ploy is that sometimes you'll face off against some perceptive opponents who may pick up on your pattern and decide to bluff raise you when you make a defensive bet. As I mentioned earlier, though, this player isn't common, but they do exist, and you should be, be, and you should be prepared for them. When you think they've picked up on the fact that you, you, know, you use the defensive bet a lot, you can actually bait them into bluff raising you by making the defensive bet when you have the nuts.
Let's take a look at another example. Okay, you raise from middle position with 10 jack to 1,000, the blinds are 2 and 400, and a tough player on the button calls your raise. Now the flop comes, king, queen, four, and you decide to check the draw to your opponent. He bets 1,800, and you call. The turn, total blank, deuce of clubs, and you decide to play the hand meekly, and you check again. This time, your opponent also checks. Now, the river, the nine of diamonds, giving you the nuts straight. Now, this would be an opportunity to make a defensive size bet, trying to sell the idea that you have a hand like ace-queen. Keeping in line with your real defensive bets, let's say 2,000 is right around the correct number. That bet size doesn't look like the type of bet you'd make if you just made the nuts. Normally, in that situation, you'd want to bet more and try to get full value. However, against an aggressive player who may be on to your defensive betting style, he may see this as a perfect opportunity to represent exactly what you already have. You see, if he puts you on a hand like ace-queen or even ace-king for that matter, a river raise in this situation is very believable from his perspective. The way he played the hand, he could easily have the nuts straight, and if he did, he'd probably make a raise to six or 7,000. So let's say your opponent had pocket sixes. Well, he might bet the flop in position to win it right there, but once you call, he knows you have something. So he checks the turn. But now on the river, he senses another opportunity to steal this pot. If you bet bigger on the river, you take his play away from him as he's less likely to pounce. If you check, well, you just might decide not to bluff since it looks like he's going to get called. The 2,000 bet in this situation could be the perfect play. He'll call it with a queen or a king for sure, and he might also raise you with absolutely nothing too. As with virtually anything poker related, the key to success is learning how to mix up your play and adjust your play according to your opponent's perception of you and your style. Maximizing value on any particular hand is just as much about knowing your opponent as it is playing the hand fundamentally correct. That's actually one of the reasons I have a problem with using absolute terms when it comes to poker. There is rarely a situation where one bet is better than another in every situation. So much of it is dependent on the opponents you're playing, okay? For example, take that last hand we just covered and change the player from a tough, aggressive player to a weak player who calls too much on the river. Against that kind of player, a defensive bet would just be foolish. Instead, against him, you'd want to bet about 6,000 on the river and hope to get a call from a king or maybe a queen. You see, against this type of player, your defensive bet has little value since your opponent won't raise you on the river unless he has, well, the same hand you do, the straight. The defensive bet is an important weapon, especially in tournament poker. It's a bet that will help neutralize your opponent's positional advantage against you and will allow you to take control of the river play with minimal risk. It's a play that's most effective, though, when used sparingly. The situation has to be just right for it to work properly. Knowing when the right time to use it, well, that's something that should come with a little bit more experience.